Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author, and welcome to my quilt room. So, have you ever been working on a project and you keep trying to find, um, via through an internet search or YouTube or whatnot, on how to do a specific thing? Well, that happened to me with this last quilt that I made for a client um, that I was working on. So it was the pinwheel quilt that had the prairie points all the way around it. And although I know how to do prairie points and have been making prairie points for years, this particular pattern that my client had found on Pinterest uh, was done with a prairie point on a border, not as a prairie point as a, um, a binding. So that gave me some challenges. And I have shared a picture of that very quilt that I did make and finish. You can see it right here. And I'm going to show you also how to make prairie points as a border. All right, so you might be asking yourself, what is a prairie point? That's a very good question. A prairie point is a square that you turn into a rectangle. Um, a lot of people like to use a five inch square or a five and a half inch square. Um, I personally, for this blanket that I made for the baby quilt, I had to use a smaller one because it was for a baby. And so, I used two and a half inch squares. So this is what I used. Two and a half inch square. And this is actually the same fabric that I used in that baby quilt. And uh, th these are the leftover squares that I have from it. So I have a yellow one. I have the pink one. And I have the blue one. All right, so what you're looking at here is my little portable uh, um, ironing board that I have made myself. This is just a cover that I made for it, and on the other side is actually a cutting board. But I like to use this because I like to have a pressing surface that I don't always have to get up and go to my ironing table. I am also using a Cricut Mini Easy Easy Press Mini. So this is what I will be doing to uh, show you how to press these flat. This is what it looks like. And I purchased this because it was on sale. And um, we're gonna give it a try. This will be my first time giving this a try. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a little press. Then you're going to take your square here and you're going to fold it into a triangle, just like that. And you're gonna press it, okay? Then you're going to fold it again, and you're going to make another triangle. And this works really good. Um, I prefer steam but this works really good, actually. So there's that. So we have our one of our first prairie points done. So let's try it with the yellow. Again, we're just gonna fold it into a triangle, press it down. And if you're using this little mini press iron, you want to be very careful because it is very hot. It gets up to 400 degrees, I believe. Very hot. So, that down and we have another prairie point okay so I already have some that are pre-made as you can see just left over from when I did it before so what we're going to do is we're going to get our border ready and I'm going to show you how we do this around on the fabric now I'm going to do this on a much smaller scale Okay, so I have gone ahead now 
and I have cut a few <clears throat> little things, I, a few little strips that I'm going to attach my prairie points on. First of all, I've cut what would be our quilt. Okay, so this is just a scrap piece. It's smaller and sized and easier to work with and easier to explain. So I have this top piece facing me. So this is gonna be our inner border that we're going to put the prairie points onto. And because we're going to be flipping these, we want to make sure that the direction is going correctly. So I'm going to make sure that my points are going upward and that the triangular flat part goes along the edge of the border of my um, of my border that I'm going to be attaching to my quilt. So uh, first things first, this has an opening on this side. So when I'm going to a corner, I want to make sure that the side that isn't open, the side that is closed, is the side that I'm going to put down. Sorry, wrong way around along the edge here. I have to think about this too for a minute because sometimes it can be a little tricky, okay? Next, I'm gonna take another color and I'm just gonna alternate. Now this one, I want to be open because I want to be able to fit it inside like so right here. And I'm just leaving about a quarter of an inch here in between the two. You can also do larger if you want to. You can leave an inch, half an inch, however much you want to. I'm leaving a quarter. Then I'm gonna open up our pink and all you're gonna do is just continue to line these up. You wanna make sure that they stay flat along here. And then once you get to this corner, you're gonna use the closed end again at the end here. And you can kind of, um, you can kind of force it to what size you want it to to be to make it fit on the edge here. Okay, so that is that one right there. Now, what I like to do <clears throat> is I like to clip instead of pinning. I found that clipping these was a whole lot easier than pinning them. And by clipping, I'm talking about these little quilt clips, all right? So I'm just gonna slide it here and catch underneath just so I can hold these little points in place. So I should have been doing this as I was going along. It makes the process much easier, but I didn't. So just keep that in mind when you're going to do this, okay? So now I've got that holding all of these little edges down. All right, so now I've got my little points. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip them over and I'm going to readjust with my clips. Just line it up on that edge because I want it to all be lined up. And this is a little bit time consuming, okay? So when you're working with a bigger piece of fabric or quilt. This is this is something that you actually want to take your time doing and making sure that you're doing it right. Um, it did take me a while to do it and I, I did have to stop and I had to redo it a couple of times, okay? Just to make sure that everything was, was correct. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch just along my seam line and I'll be right back. As you can see, I have sewn my quarter inch seam and I have used red thread so that you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to come over here 
and I am going to press this. I'm actually going to set the seam. My iron was getting too hot. So I'm just gonna set my seam and then I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a little easier to do with a big iron. The seam pressing part, that, that I will say. And you have a pretty thick seam because you've got all of these seams going through it. But if you understand the concept, you'll be able to do this. So that's the most important piece of this, okay? So now you see we've got one of our borders attached. We're gonna do this again. We're gonna do this to the other border now. All right, so I have my quarter inch foot on. I've got my red thread in here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it as we go along. I'm gonna pull out this first clip. I'm gonna drop everything down and I'm going to start sewing. You're just gonna sew like you normally would. Just sew it down. So it's done. We've sewn it. Now I'm just gonna fold it out. Okay. I'm gonna press it. I've already shown you how to do this part. Okay. So now we're going to start on the um, opposite side or the other sides of the borders. You're probably wondering how do you get it to be on this end, right? This was what I found to be the most tricky. And so again, I cut these little guys here. And flip that. Now here is where you need to be very, very, very careful because you want to make sure that your little prairie points are going to match up somewhat right here. So we have yellow, pink, blue. So the next color after this yellow would be pink. It would be pink. And then it would be blue. This gets tricky on a bigger one, okay? There we go. So now for this one, you're only gonna have two, but you want to make sure that your points right here, this is what I'm talking about here. You wanna make sure that those are lined up very, very well. That's what makes your prairie points look even when they're not exactly even. I like to use a pen when I'm doing this, to be honest. Um, what I did was I'd take a pen and I would line up my little pink prairie point right here at the edge where the yellow one begins. So I would just take a pen, ouch, stick it in there. And then where my blue one is, actually I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the clips too so that everything is nice and lined up here, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my blue right where the pink, get, or right where that yellow comes in. 
right there. And again, I'm going to stick a pin there just so I know that I kind of want to be in that area. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it to not match up. And then you're just going to do the same thing for this side. All right. So I've gone ahead and I've done both sides. Let's press them out and see what happens. Now look at that. Now you might be asking yourself, how do I keep these flat? And I'm going to tell you. <laughs> So when you do this, they do pop up. If you use a little bit of steam, it'll help to lay them down. But when you're quilting the quilt, what you want to do is you want to actually top stitch around each one of these on top of this, just right along here. I like to use my stitch in the ditch foot right here just to uh, stitch in that ditch and hold them down. But on the blanket that I made, that baby quilt that had these, I actually did a quarter inch um, stitch along and it worked out great. So I highly recommend stitching them down to hold them in place. And I know these are not perfect because, well, this is, we're doing this kind of fast. Um, but this is what you should have. Something that looks very similar to this. Okay, and now what you can do if you wanted to add an additional border. So say you wanna add a pink border to this. You would cut your border, whatever size your border is, and now you would just stitch it on here like you would normal. Okay, so I've just gotten and cut some random strips. So these are the strips that I've cut. They're not even, I didn't even rotary cut them, I just scissor cut them. So these are what I'm going to go ahead and sew on to our little scrap piece with our prairie points. And I'm going to show you how you would add a border to it. Okay, so just like with anything, any regular border, you're going to just want to put your border piece. You want your right sides facing each other. Here's your white piece. Here's your nice side. Face it. If you don't know how to do this, I will link to um, one of my videos that teaches you how to add borders to a quilt. It's actually pretty easy to do. But then you're just going to start sewing a quarter of an inch down. Okay. I am going to press this out just to make sure I didn't get those points and I did not. So that's how I've added a border there. All right, so this is what we have after we've added the borders and put our prairie point border in. So that is how you do that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You click the little, if you click the little bell, you'll get notified each and every time that I upload a new video. Oh, my Minnie Mouse watch is talking. <laughs> anyway, that is it for me today on The Crafty Author. If you'd like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Um, Keep on crafting. I hope everybody has a wonderful week and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.